better. Much better, yes. Ah. Oh, interesting. I am a friend of Terence. I'm Alan. Hi, Alan. Nice to meet you. Very well. It is nice to meet you. And your name is? Max. Max. Very nice. Very good. I work with uh, third strand DNA. Wow which is becoming a part of the human culture eventually, and we are looking at its development in some humans at this time. It is starting to uh, be evidenced. Is it physical? It is, but uh, it is in the, what you call the junk DNA, it is, beginning there from different hybridization processes. But it is obvious that there is something uh, different with the junk DNA in humans at this time, and that it is working to build a new strand. But other than that, I also work with ascension parameters and with light holding and different things of this nature because there are so many things that are happening on your world at this time. We must be multitasking to keep up with uh, the information because there are, it's all connected in some way. Uh, let me interrupt you. Uh, what are your expertise? Do you really um, understand the chemistry of DNA? I, I am not... a working with the chemistry of DNA, but the, in the actual origin of it in a new place and uh, in the species of humanity and how it will uh, formulate. You see, from, uh, from my perspective, there is no space for the third strand in the physical. It could be only in ethereal. It is actually of appearing in the physical, but not in a, a great, a great way, but you're right. It would be partially in the, the spiritual, but at this point I see a beginning in the physical, just a very small amount of trace elements that look different and seem to be forming a strand. And that's what we're studying. All right. There are several of us that are looking at this. With all we are doing is basically dissecting what the what it is made of and how it can possibly move forward. It is made of the same materials as the the first two strands, but in Looking at it, it's not connected yet to it fully. 
you see here is the, how it looks so that's uh, red one is double stranded DNA and it forms a double helix and yes uh, right exactly basis in the middle if you put a third strand there is a space for the third strand but I don't see how its basis could fit into that structure. It would be pretty hard. No, it would. It would not. It does not look like it will fit into the same structure. It looks like it will be outside of the regular structure. So the the DNA is based on pairing of the bases. So for triple stranded uh, DNA, would it triple? Yeah. It would, this is what our, our theory is at this time. Please um, mm -hmm. understand that we are not sure how it's going to move at this point. But we feel that it is uh, connected to the psyche. The third st strand will be outside of the physical <coughs> strand. In the sense, it will be a physical strand, but it will connect only to the psyche and to the extra extra sensories uh, perceptions of humanity for that is the next step that man is heading for is the greater understanding of the psychic energy so it would be a physical strand but not connected it would be connected at the top and bottom but not in the intertwining portions of the uh, of the DNA. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. You um, don't believe in that? I'm looking at the at the models, and they don't look pretty. They look ugly. I look at the models. People try to model triple stranded DNA, and it doesn't look too pretty. Double no. stranded is perfect, and triple the third strand is uh, extraneous. It, it is extraneous, exactly. <clears throat> All right. Uh, but yeah, there are models, yeah. I see at least one model which is... I, I do not agree with that model, by the way. But that's all right. It does not matter at this time. We, it is still at the very beginning. Uh, but, my impression was it was uh, the, the other strands were ethereal, so then they would fit perfectly from other dimensions. But physically, there is no space there to fit. No, physically it does not appear to be space. However, it will alter the, the actual DNA as it stands eventually. But it takes a long time for a strand to develop. It's not going to happen soon. Tell me your story. How did it get? Did you, were you born on Earth? No. Yes, I was born on Earth. I'm actually from the United States uh -huh. of America. Uh -huh. But it was earlier on in the 1930s that I was taken. I lived in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. I had a science degree. Mm -hmm. And it was something that I was very interested in. I wasn't really interested in having a family. I wasn't really interested in uh, working in the mainstream of the working world. And I had a lot of interest in experimentations with different uh, things. And I like to do my own uh, things. And I had plenty of money because I had inherited some. And so I really didn't have to work. I don't think in the 30s there was uh, any science in Arkansas. Where no, it... there was not much, and the, but I didn't go to, no, there was not much science in Arkansas. I didn't go to school there. I see. <clears throat> but um, that's where my home is, uh -huh. was. So I came back to Arkansas, and I was sort of a loner. I did not really interact. And, when I disappeared, nobody even noticed. So that's the way it was. At which age did you did you leave? What? At which age did you leave? Oh, leave? Oh, at about thirty-five. Uh huh. And how old are you now? I don't even know. All right. 
Uh, we don't keep it track. I mean, it's a different. How, how old do you feel? How old do you feel percent wise of the? Of oh, the I still feel very young. But you see, there's a different time. This is different timings than what what it was on Earth. Earth years are much different than the years here. Mm -hmm. Do you get a family? No, I didn't have a family. And but you never married? Here, here I have interacted with some peoples, and I find it more engaging here. The people are much easier to talk to. They have similar interests. So I'm able to be interactive in a better way. I really wasn't very social back then. So, and my parents were not very social as well. Have you traveled the galaxy? No, not really. Um, mm -hmm. I have traveled to a couple places to do some studies. And that is about all I can say. How was it legally organized? So you left the Earth and came to the planet. Did, did you get citizenship or something? Well, they saw I had made contact briefly. I, I thought I was actually imagining it. I thought it was actually a dream segment that I had made contact with uh, these people that said they were from the Pleiades star system. And I was like uh, a little skeptical. They tried to look pretty human. They looked pretty human. But I thought it was a dream sequence, so I, I really didn't pay much attention to it. And they introduced themselves and asked me what I was doing. So I, it was, I thought psychologically it was my mind trying to give me some company, trying to interact socially in some way so that I wouldn't go insane or be uh, odd or whatever. So I just thought it was a... a a matter of the mind working, and I didn't pay too much attention to it. But it happened again <coughs> within the next six months, and they were, at this time, they said, you remember us, and we would like for you to come with us. We like the fact that you are always experimenting, and we like the fact that you're all, always being scientific. So. Um, we would like to train you, and I was like, uh, to uh, we would like to bring you into a greater understanding of the science that you're working with, and that sounded very nice. I was, but I didn't still believe it too much. And then uh, they said, but in order for us to take you, we would you will have to uh, appear to be non-existent on this planet and i said and how are you supposed to do that and they said well we'll find a way if you want to come but um other than that we are just offering at this time so I, they gave me some time to think about it they said told me when they were going to return and that's when i knew it was real is when they told me when they were going to return and they actually did return at that time. And that's when I knew everything was absolutely and totally real. So, and that is when I decided that absolutely that would be something that I would be interested in. When I, when I knew that it was real. Yes? I can't hear you. Are you following the f development of <clears throat> politics and economy on Earth? Um, yes, in some ways. So what do you think, what is happening? Is there anything we are missing? <clears throat> is there something <coughs> missing, did you say? Uh, are we missing any important information? Like we are looking at different <laughs> conspiracies and different aliens being involved are we missing anything important of course you're only missing the things that you're not supposed to see but um uh, everything that is supposed to be seen is being seen um you have to pay attention to the details 
of course. But the scientific details are not as exposed as they should be. Your science is well, much farther along than they would have you believe. They have many discoveries that are, have not been shared with the public. Mm -hmm. That I find to be a, a crime in itself because they should share everything that they have learned. Uh, who are they? What? Who are they who are hiding The scientists, it? the governments. The governments have had projects in science for many years, as you know, and they do funding and grant work, but they, they do private and secret grant funding and grant work as well. So these secretive areas and secret fundings for very high um, technological expansions are, are very well documented in your governments, but not shared with the, with the world at all. Uh-huh. Right. All right. Th thank you. I, um, I invite the next speaker. It was nice to speak to you. I'm just, today I have short time, so I would like to speak to a few more people. All right. I, would, I will bring whoever is next. Yeah, I have um, Linda Johnson, L. Nostradamus, Lao Tzu. These are an angels. All right. One moment, please. Thank you.